Let's do something that's uh, fun and easy and sort of suits that theme. So I'm going to select everything and delete it. And we're going to make a little dungeon lever, bringing in a plane. Let's scale this in the X to make the base. Something like that. Okay, let's extrude up like that. And then we're going to extrude up again. And I'd inset a little bit like that. Okay, let's now go to two edge selection and shift alt and click these edges all the way around shift alt and click and then let's bevel control B pull just with the two like that. So we have those notches. Now let's bevel those by selecting them all the way around. Okay, and we bevel these with three, control B, pull, not too much, just a little bit. Put one extra one in there by rolling your mouse up. Shift Alt and click these edges as well, and control B and pull, and we have that. I'm gonna shade smooth, and to work on the shading issues, I'm gonna add weighted normal, and normal's auto smooth. And we're gonna get rid of this bottom face, and this is what we have. Let's switch over to a matte cap, one of these sculpting matte caps. That looks nice. All right, so we're going to make the rest of the lever, the rounded part now. Okay, let's bring in a circle. Let's go with 32 vertices. Just leave it like that. Go into edit mode. Pull that up a little bit. One for vertex selection, and let's rotate Y90. All right, let's look from the side and scale it down. And B for box select, we're going to grab these and delete those ver vertices. And I'm going to pull that down and just have a look at it. I think I need to make it a bit bigger. I'm looking at the front and the back. Uh, I'm going to pull it out to there. And I think I'll just extrude. And we'll do that. And then we'll just position it and get the approximate size that we want. Something like that. Okay, in edge selection, shift alt and click there and add a face. There and add a face. So we'll have this. Yeah, that looks okay. Put bolts in there. And let's now control R to drop an edge loop in and control B split a roll back so you only have the two. And we'll make a an area in the middle like that. Deselect, press three for face selection and C and just drag your mouse over these. And we're going to leave the bottom two. Yeah. All right. Now, to make the indent, we're going to press E and Alt S and pull and come down like this. So, just looking here for how deep you want it to be. When we do that, these ones get angled down. So, I'm going to go to two fake edge selection, sorry, edge selection, and hold Shift and grab both of those. And I want to pull it up equal to this height. So, I'm going to turn on snapping, snap to edge. And then press GZ and hover your mouse over this and press control or hold down control and it snaps to there. I want to pull these off. I want to separate them. So C in face selection and go over these. So we got those selected P and now we have those separated. I'm going to hide those H to hide. So this is what we have here. Let's uh, slash key actually look at that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's add a bevel to this and see how good it looks. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to shift alt and click that edge and that edge, and I'm going to bevel this. Control B, pull. I just want two, and I want it sort of notched down like, like that. Let's try shading smooth, and then let's add a bevel. And I'm going to bring that up, I think, to 3 and 0 0.02 or 0 0.01 we could try. There, we'll go with that. I think that looks fine like that. Let's Alt-H to bring that back. Okay, so we're going to make the little indentations in this. Control-R and Control-B, separate it out and pull it something like um, something like that and then we'll come back in again control B and pull and we'll make a, a little area here right here these lines these rows where we can 
uh, extrude down. So I'm going to shift alt and click there. And I might want them a little wider. I might do two levels. So I'm going to put individual origins and scale in the X to make them wider. And then I'm going to, yeah, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll extrude these down now. E and Alt S and pull like that. And we'll do another one in just a moment. Let's just focus on this and get rid of some faces that were created. Go in and in face selection, shift alt and click. Not shift, I'll just hold shift. Shift and click and get rid of those. Let's just leave it like that and do the other little indentation I want to do. Drop an edge loop in there, select both of those and control B, pull, and have just a smaller section in there. We'll do the same thing. E and Alt S and pull down like that. And then let's get rid of the extra faces in face selection number three. Those ones and these ones. Good. Now we're going to bevel. So two for edge selection. And let's just start grabbing uh, all of these uh, sharp edges and bevel them just by hand. You could put on the bevel modifier, I suppose, if you want, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to pull. There's two, one more, three, done. Shade smooth. Uh, let's take it, Alt N, recalculate inside. That's going to be fine. And we can put on weighted normal, normals auto smooth. We may be joining some of these things later, so we will see. So we have that, and we'll see what's coming up with that in just a second. Uh, we may want to put on that same weighted normal and normals auto smooth on this one as well. And we may want it on that one. Um, I think I'm going to actually modify the size of this and just scale it down and scale it in the X a little bit. And let's go ahead and uh, put a bolt on there. Why not? So to bring it close, let's select that edge and shift S cursor to select it. Let's bring our 3D cursor in the vicinity where we're going to want it. Now I'm going to bring in a UV sphere and I'll make it pretty, pretty low poly. We'll go for 10 and 6. And that should be enough for what we want to do. Let's look from the front or the back and go in a wireframe and 1 for vertex selection. Box select the bottom and delete it. Take it and scale it in the Z to flatten it a bit and scale it globally. Pull it down and just position where uh, where you like and get the size that you like. You can shade smooth that and that should be okay because we're not going to zoom in on it. Uh, in fact, that might be too uh, too tall. We might want it pushed like that. It looks a little bit, I don't know, maybe more reasonable. All right, let's select this whole thing and bring the 3D cursor there. So it's right in the middle. Now we can take that and set the origin to the 3D cursor. And we should be able to mirror in the X and in the Y. And I'm actually going to start joining some stuff. I just want to double check the position of this. Just want to kind of in the middle of that notch thing. So I will apply this mirror. And I'm going to, I'm going to just going to go ahead and join those. All right, so let's work on the handle. So the first thing we want to do, edge selection, select that. That's the middle edge of the whole thing. Bring the 3D cursor there. We're going to bring in a plane. In fact, I'm probably going to put a subdivision on this. Control one, and then th th we're gonna. This will be all dark with dirt and stuff. You'll never, never see in there. If you really wanted to, you could probably grab this. Let me just double check. You could pull that in. Maybe we'll do that. All right. A uh, scale in the Y. Uh, I'm, an I'm in individual origins. Make sure we're in median point. Scale in the Y and just pull it under, so you'll never even see that. Although with the subdivision, we're going to have to, maybe we'll put that on and just pull it down to flatten that out pretty much. We'll do that on this side to flatten it out pretty much. Good enough. We're never going to see in there. All right, back to what we were doing. Oh, and by the way, with the subdivision, uh, we may need actually another edge loop in here. So I'll drop one right in the middle and control B and pull. I just want to, just pulling it out pretty much to the side. That'll give it the support it needs and it'll look, it'll look better. Okay, so bring in a plane now, scale it down. Look from the, not that angle, from the front. 
And what I want is uh, this edge right in the middle, that edge right in the middle. It's looking pretty good. So in edge selection, select those edges up from the front, extrude down. So it goes right in there. So that's what the handle's gonna sit on. All right, I'm just gonna bring it up and we'll pull these guys just right down in like that. Okay, you wanna give this some thickness, a few different ways of doing it, but I will go with solidify, I'll put on equal thickness and I'll just drag this to get the thickness I want. You can drag in or out. I'll do something like that. And then I'll come back and I'll grab uh, that edge. Can't really see it, but I'm pretty sure I got it. And that edge, let's go back into solid view. Uh, no, I won't. I'll grab that face and that face and I'll scale in the X just to pull these into, into the middle of these grooves. So let's see, how would that be? That would be probably fine. All right, I'm gonna apply the solidify and come into this and do some work on it. Actually, let's slash key and let's grab this and this and just pull it down a little bit more to be sure and then delete those faces. Then two for edge selection, shift alt and click these ones that go right through and bevel it like this with three and then come around and grab these ones and do the same thing. There we go, shade smooth. And as usual, we'll add the other stuff. But again, we may be joining some stuff, so we may be losing some modifiers and needing to do it again. Okay, that's all right. Now it's time to make the handle. I got my 3D cursors right there, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a cylinder. And I'll probably put a subdivision on, so I'm just gonna use 18 vertices and make this relatively large, almost filling the whole space there. All right, let's get rid of the bottom face so we don't forget to do that. Push it back down and then do any kind of design you want. I'm gonna come up a little ways and then I'm gonna come up and, and scale in. And then I'm gonna come up again a bit more. And now I'll come up and out, up. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. And in, just like that. And then the handle is going to go in here, so I'm going to inset a little bit, and then I'm going to extrude down just a little bit, and then I'll delete that face. Okay, so now I'm going to grab these edges, and I'm going to bevel those ones right there, first of all, with three. I'm going to bevel underneath there and underneath here with three, and then this one. And let's see how that looks. That looks just fine even without a subdivision. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, the only thing is I kinda of would like these to look a little different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna box select everything and I'm gonna pull it down so that this first one is smaller than that one. I don't know. All right, so now we're going to create the handle. Let's uh, grab that circle there, Shift D to duplicate it, pull it up to break it out this one i probably will have a subdivision on i'm just going to tuck it under there and the hardest part for me now is to figure out how tall it should be i'm going to scale it out though a little bit maybe not so much i have to make a face and control b i want to round this quite a bit like that let's say just have a look at that not too bad. All right, and um, I think to, I'll create a design in this way. I think I'll, I'll bring an edge loop up to about there, and maybe I'll have all of this as a sort of metal piece, and, the, and that's wood. So I'm gonna select that face in Control Plus until I get to that new edge loop. And then I'm just gonna E and Alt S and just make this bigger. I guess I'm pulling down and make it bigger. And I'll take this edge, and I'll, I'll bevel that edge with however many, three is fine, I don't care. Um, I'm gonna take this all, it looks a little discolored and dark, let's see if I'm right. Yeah, it is flipped. All right, so I'm gonna Alt N, recalculate outside. It just didn't look right to me. Um, if I go ahead and do, uh, did I do Shade Smooth? No. Let's bring an edge loop up here to fix that. Shading. You know, it's probably fine without a subdivision. So I keep saying I'm gonna use it and I don't. Um, I was thinking, is that enough for details? 
Do I need to do some notches or something? I'm just going to try it. I'm going to bring this up. I don't know. I'm just going to do something like this. And then I'm going to select these edges here. And I'm going to bevel, but just with two. So I have this and then E and Alt S and pull in. Um, decide if. Yeah, I could, I could. Okay, the shading can be fixed by Bree. No, I, actually, I'll, I'll bevel. I'll bevel it. Uh, it's very tight. It's not, not a lot of room, but I will bevel. And I'll just have three. In fact, I'm going to bevel all of these. So I'm going to grab these edges here. I'm holding sh uh, Shift and Alt, uh, including this one. And, uh, and I'm going to Control-B to bevel that with three and I might leave the rest rounded will I or do I really want to go in I could drop one more edge loop in the middle or you could try edge crease and see if that works for you I'm going to control B but roll back to two just to do that um now it looks like this should be metal but I want it to be wood <laughs> oh well we're committed <clears throat> do I want to do anything here like select that edge and control B to pull and then E and Alt S pull it in and then bevel these edges with uh, how many have I got two three um, can I make that a bit bigger by selecting that face and control plus until I get down into that trench and then back up by one and scale shift Z and then drop an edge loop here and here. Not too much. Now I do want the subdivision on there. And I just added it. Okay, and that is pretty much it. The only other thing is I feel like I could I would like a bolt there. So I'm gonna come in here and select one of those and control L to select what's linked. Shift D to duplicate it and pull it up to break it out instead of trying to futz around and figure out where it goes I'm going to look from the not there front select that edge bring my 3d cursor there and now I can easily position this take that say you go set your origin to the 3d cursor and set the geometry origin and you're you're at least close let's come in here and rotate X minus 90 no it's not minus 90 rotate X 90 and uh, I might scale in the Y, get it a little bit more sticking out-ish. Look from the front, scale it down, and push it in. Yeah, we're gonna do that. All right, and then to get one on the other side, I'm gonna select this whole thing and bring my 3D cursor there, and then take this, set the origin to the 3D cursor, and mirror this in the Y. I'm going to apply that mirror because I think I'm going to join those right now. Okay, so how are you looking? Is anybody backwards? That was the question we needed to ask. No? All right, and I wanted to show you just one more thing, and that is if we wanted to rotate this handle. Now, really, some of this is, is, is just going to be metal. I'm going to start joining some things. I'm going to join those. This is going to be wood, but I can easily... I'll leave it apart for now. But, uh, all right, so let's just focus on... Uh, let's focus on this thing. And we're going to come in and in Edge Selection, Shift, Alt, and Click. So we select that whole thing, and Shift, S, Cursor to select it. We'll switch our pivot to the 3D cursor and slash. So our pivot is right there. So now all we got to do is select all parts of the handle, look from the side, and turn that back on. And we just rotate. Just make sure you're an orthographic rotate. And so you can get it, you know, in that position. All right, I'm just going to bring that back, though. And that is our guy for now, or gal. Not sure about that, <laughs> but uh, there we go. Yeah, I think it might look better if it wasn't there, but it might catch a little bit of uh, texture, so we'll see. 
All right, so we'll come back and we'll put, uh, put a texture on this and say this is our dungeon lever. Thanks for watching.